speakers that are coming today. We have the Right Honourable George Galloway, a person that Whoa! has... I think applause needs to be louder than that. George Galloway. Whoa! George Galloway is a man for decades that has been speaking out for the Palestinian cause and for justice. He will be here shortly. We have an imam and also a counsellor by the name of Ilyas Kamani. We have Lauren Booth. We also have Ashley Shaw. She's a female that has become a YouTube sensation speaking out for the injustice of what's happening in Gaza. We have my brother Adil. The Revolution Riders will be coming with a convoy of superbikes. We have a gentleman by the name of Shamshuddin Ahmed. He is friends from Al Aqsa and he will be speaking to you all and educating you today about boycotting Israeli products. He goes under the banner, I check the label, do you? We have a female speaker by the name of Bridget who grew up in Gaza, whose father was initially the British Alliance of Israel. She will be speaking about her trials and tribulations today. We also have Mohammed Shafiq from Ramadan Foundation and Ummah Channel. We have a gentleman by the name of Arshad Bashir and Maz Raymond from an organization called One Voice, One Vision. We have a wonderful young lady who is a successful business woman and has some very um, specific things to say about what's happening in Gaza. She's a mother, she's a sister, she's a wife. Her name is Farnaz Khan. We also have the organizers of the Leeds demonstrations in Leeds that took place this week. He also has brought with him his um, friend who is from Gaza and lives in Palestine. Adnan Hussein, the team of Drive for Justice and the coordinators are, will be coming with their convoy shortly to Bradford. We have MC Bilal Major Shah that will be here to do some MC with a fantastic um, MC with touching words for all of you to listen to. We will also have Liz, Liz Bismillah because we will have a two minute silence and we will be reading out the names of all the children that have been murdered. Ladies and gentlemen, Adnan Hussein and everybody from Drive for Justice coming from Manchester, a round of applause! Oh! This is the crew!
buried under rubble. They hid themselves in a young woman in pink, household splinters, slippers, sprawled on the pavement, taken down while fleeing. They hid themselves in two brothers, eight and four, lying in the intensive care unit in Shiva. They hid themselves in the little boy whose parts were carried away by his father in a plastic shopping bag. They hid themselves in the incurable chaos, incomparable chaos of bodies arriving at Gaza Hospital. They hid themselves in an elderly woman lying in a pool of blood on a stone floor. Hamas, they tell us, is cowardly and cynical. Brothers, these are our brothers and sisters. Can you imagine a father carrying his son home in a plastic bag? This is what we are talking about. This is what we are here to show our solidarity with. And, and, and we have a right to be angry. And we should be angry. And if you are not angry, there is something wrong with you. But you need to use that anger. Use that anger. You need to channel that anger as a force for good on this earth. As a force for fighting every injustice, every oppression, wherever we see that. Otherwise we become no worse than the murderers and those who brutalize the innocent. So brothers and sisters, just a few words here today. Remember the dead. And remember that we have a responsibility. We are connected with our brothers and sisters in Gaza at the moment. They are from us and we are from them. In our hundreds, in our billions, we are all Palestinians. Thank you.
Israel and its friends that we will use all the breath that God has given us to raise our voices against the disaster which has overcome the Palestinian people and when we are gone our sons and our daughters and their sons and their daughters and if necessary their sons and their daughters will continue to fight until Palestine is free. Almost 1,000 Palestinians have been massacred in this murderous rampage that the Zionist state that they call Israel has been on. But by the grace of God, more Palestinians have been born in the last three weeks then Israel has murdered, and murder will never solve the problem of what they call Israel because the Palestinians, by the grace of God, are growing in numbers, growing in determination, and the children of those they have murdered these last three weeks will never stop resisting that which has happened to their people and their families. And this is something I want to make clear. And because you know me, you know that when I say this, I mean it. What I have been saying these weeks, months, years and decades, I will never apologize for. I will never apologize categorically or otherwise for saying this. I stand with the resistance of the Palestinian people. I stand with their right to defend themselves with whatever they have at their disposal. I stand with their right to resist those who have stolen their country, scattered their people, murdered those who remain and have kept the people of Gaza behind wire in an open-air concentration camp in the 1940s. The Nazis did this to the Jews in Warsaw, in Poland, and elsewhere. They put all the Jews of Warsaw behind wire in the ghetto, and they starved them one by one to death. They condemned them one by one to death from typhus and disease. And finally the Jews of the Warsaw Ghetto decided that it was better to die on their feet collectively than to wait for their incarcerators to murder them one by one. And so they rose up in the rising of the Jews of the Warsaw Ghetto and that's what the Palestinian people in Gaza are doing right now. They are coming out and they are saying, they are saying to those who are killing them, we would rather die facing you face to face on our feet than to wait for you to kill us. And in this kind of a conflict, you have to choose which side you're on. Are you with the occupier? and the murderer, or are with you with the occupied and their resistance? And we at least are clear about that. I have been saying throughout this conflict that two things at home are thrown into sharp relief. The first is the grotesque, obscene bias of the British media where Palestinians die, but Israelis are killed. Where Israelis are targeting militants. When the vast majority of those they have killed, now almost 1,000 and more than 5,000 maimed for the rest of their lives, the vast majority of those have been women and children, including babies, including babies, yet unborn. They are not militants. They are not Hamas. They are just Palestinians 
who have the misfortune to have been born and to be alive behind that wire where there is nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. But none of this is reflected in the mainstream British media. And I say again here what I have said for the last three weeks. I refuse to pay a license fee to the BBC so that they can lie to the British people about Palestine. And I hope that you will join me because if enough of us refuse to pay the liars, the liars will be out of work and will have no more opportunity to lie. The second thing that has been thrown into sharp relief is the ironclad consensus on the front benches of the mainstream British political parties. All of them are falling over themselves to show their friendship with Israel. Well, I'll tell you something. I don't want to be a friend of Israel. I don't think the majority of people in Britain want to be friends of Israel. So how come, how come all our top politicians queue up to join the friends of Israel? I'll tell you why. Because they're more afraid of Israel than they are afraid of us. And we have to make them afraid of us. We have to make them understand that if they won't stand up for Palestine, we won't vote for them. That's how we make them afraid of us. The Member of Parliament for Bradford East, David Ward, I don't know this year, he did the best thing in his life this week and I supported him when he stood up for the Palestinian people. But Nick Clegg ordered him to apologize. Shame on Nick Clegg. And David Ward did apologize. Shame on him for apologizing. He should have stood up. And if he'd stood up, we would have stood beside him. We would have defended him. We would have helped him in his election next year. I'll tell you something. He would have had a much better chance being elected outside of the Liberal Democrats than he does inside the Liberal Democrats. So we have to change this paradigm. Last two points I want to make. I think the Palestinian flag is flying from the town hall today. I'm very glad about that. I flew my first Palestinian flag from the Dundee City Hall in 1980, 34 years ago. 34 years later I can say that the flag in my own city is flying and I'm very, very proud about that. But we have to go further. I'm calling now on my parliamentary colleagues Ward and Sutcliffe to join me and I'm calling on the councillors in here from all parties to twin Bradford with Gaza now and forevermore to twin Bradford with Gaza. And lastly, the boycott campaign the boycott campaign is underway here in Bradford and everywhere else in the world. I want us to declare here today that Bradford is an Israel free zone. Nothing, no one, nothing. We don't want Israeli tourists. We don't want Israeli academics. We don't want Israeli goods. We don't want Israeli services. This, Bradford, is the world's first Israel-free zone. Are you with me? Yeah. Wassalamu alaikum.
thank you very much indeed and a big congratulations to NAS and all the other organizers of this event today. I have to go to Manchester now to speak there. Please forgive me for that. May God bless all of you. Thank you. Let's start speaking. 
speaking the truth. It's all about the truth. Palestine, Gaza, West Bank, Ramallah, the children of Palestine, they're crying, they're screaming. And for some reason, we think we've done a lot by attending one or two protests. We've done nothing. We've done nothing. We've done nothing. Nothing at all. Coming to a protest, you achieve nothing but raise awareness. We need to help the people of Gaza. We need to help the people of Palestine. The first step, we need to raise awareness. That's something we're doing. The second step, drive for justice. This is the phase that we're going to start now. Inshallah. The phase, the next phase is this. We boycott every Israeli product and every... Hospital. 
people, they have not spared no mosques, they have not spared any churches, they have not spared any houses. Who are the terrorists? Who are the terrorists? Who are the terrorists? Yesterday, at 5 o'clock in the morning, I was on my way home. My sister, who is over here, was on her way home. We were planning for Drive for Justice to bring a convoy to Bradford. And on the way home, I saw an accident. Two cars toppled over, one car poorly smashed, and two bodies on the floor. I witnessed this with my own very eyes yesterday. I was part of the people that were trying to resuscitate. And how I felt? I was devastated. I couldn't get to sleep last night. This isn't the first time that I've seen a dead body but I couldn't get to sleep. I could feel the grieving families of them two bodies that were on the floor of the motorway. My sister was stood there crying and having a panic attack. And then when I got into bed, I thought to myself, why don't we feel the same about the people of Palestine? Why? Why? Over 800 people have died within the last two weeks. Why are we not crying? Why do we not feel the pain of the Palestinian people? Make your mind up today. Do you support the people of Palestine? Do you support the people of Palestine? Let's make sure that we show it through our character, through what we eat, through what we drink. Let's boycott the Israeli products. Let's think twice. Let's educate ourselves. Let's make sure
until they crumble, until they crumble or fall one by one. We will fight on them. And after that, we will also educate ourselves first. I will educate myself before I educate anybody else. And that's what you must do. Follow yourselves after you have educated yourselves. And then tell everybody about Palestine. This is the way forward. My dear brothers and sisters, it's not about what colour we are, and it's not about what religion we come from. It's about the Holocaust that's taken place in front of us. Before I leave, I want every man, woman and child to follow what I say. Because in Palestine, every man, woman and child is involved without having an option, without having a choice. So without a choice, you must respond. I say free, free!
a war has a basic principle, which is the, is the presence of two parties with equal force, equal strength. Where does the Palestinian have that power that they call it's a war? It's like my friend over there said that lady, it is nothing but a genocide. It's a genocide. Militarily, nobody on this planet can sign up to the challenges put up by Netanyahu recently. Quoting him, no one will mess with us unless the USA is prepared to go and drink. The thing that will really bring it down, crumbling into pieces, is people like you, people like me, people like you, people like me. Do you believe in that? Let me relate to your very personal story. I have a family member who worships buy one get one free offer in Coca-Cola. Listen to me, don't be embarrassed. Don't, don't be preempting. Listen to me. This is somebody who worships Coca-Cola special deals. Three days ago, the same person saw the same offer, had tears in their eyes and walked away from it. What would you be prepared to do? It is not the tanks, it is not the F-16s, it is not the politicians that will bring down and end this genocide. It will be people like you. And I'll give you an example. Less than 48 hours ago, less than 48 hours ago, rockets landed near Tel Aviv airport. Netanyahu was wetting in his pants, telling airlines not to suspend flight because that is their bank. Free Palestine. Now listen, listen, the message is, don't listen to me. Apparently, listen to the reality. The reality is, once you start hitting the bank balance of the Israeli government, that's when it will start to crumble. Hence the reason, hence the reason, it requires sacrifice. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen automatically. It requires sacrifice. You're used to getting special deals in all the big supermarkets. Suddenly you have to make sacrifices. And one of those sacrifices, you start checking the label. It is not about goods from Israel, but it is also about multinational corporations, many of whom are present in this district. It's their complicity. It's the direct meaning of the war that is taking place here that you and I, through our pockets, can control. You have to wake up. The war is not being perpetrated by the Zionist regime. We are actually fueling that war through our pockets. When will you recognize that? You have to recognize that. And only then, only then, when he said, Free, free Palestine! You have justification for saying that. Go on to the Friends of Al Aqsa website. It is not an organization, it's a think tank, it's a lobbying group. It has the recognition from the United Nations. It is not a left wing organization. It has been hosted by many European parliaments, including the European Parliament itself. Friends of Al Aqsa exists for one reason only, and that is to raise the awareness of the masses, because it is the masses that will bring about changes not the politicians. Politicians do not change policy because they feel sympathy. They change policy because the masses are risen against them. So when will you rise against them? Yeah. When will you rise against them? Yeah. When will you rise against them? Yeah. You will rise against them because you demand justice. That's what you'll rise against. You will fight this battle with integrity, with justice, with counterintelligent argument. That's how you fight this battle, and that's the only way you would win. Bombs may start dropping. Bombs may stop dropping tomorrow. Friends, the sufferings of the Palestinians will go on for decades to come yet, because the infrastructure has been totally and utterly annihilated. It's going to take decades to bring it back up. Can you imagine? Can you imagine right now? Right now, the only power station in Gaza is operating for eight hours a day, and that's because of fuel being loaned donated by Qatar, which is only going to last for three months. 
Can you contemplate for a moment that you go home and you have no electricity for one no, hour? I'm wait late. As I said to you, there's a lot of energy in the air. I want to put a reality from the context to it. You have to recognize what it is that you can do. Because it is the masses that bring about changes, not the government. Governments do not bring about changes. It is the masses that bring the changes. The more you go on saying, we will not tolerate this kind of atrocities, we will not tolerate this kind of barbarism, we will not tolerate this kind of terrorism, says who? International Court of Justice, International War Crime Court, the chief prosecutor after the 2008 massacre when, when that person was tasked to produce a report, report for the United Nations. These are the words they came up with. What Israeli comments is terrorism! You have to take control. You have to raise your awareness. Go on to the Friends of Alexa website, educate yourself, and you will realize that you have an absolutely practical role to play in order to bring about the changes in Palestine for which those people are crying out today. Thank you for turning up. Age 17, Abdul Ramadan Abu Ghazal, age 5. 
on Saturday the 12th of July and as you see age 17 Hussain Isam Al Wahish age 12 Mohammed Isam Al Wahish age 17 Maria Majid Al Barhash age 13 Anas Al Barhash age 10 Mohammed Arif age 13 and Kasim Jada age 16 on Sunday the 13th of July, Mohammed Al Araj, aged just three years of age, and Hussam Ibrahim, aged 14. On Monday the 14th of July, Saeed Maher, aged 17, Sarah Amar Sheikh Ali, aged just four. On Tuesday the 15th of July, there is no reported children being killed, that is the only day since the siege. Wednesday the 16th of July, Ibrahim Ramadan was aged 10. He was playing on the beach with his friends. Ahad Baka, aged 10. Zakaria Baka, aged 10. Mohammed Bakra, age 11. Ishmael Baka, aged just 9. A few hours later, after being taken to the hospital, their playmate, Hamza, age six, joined them. On Thursday, July the 17th, Fuller Tariq, age eight, Jahad Tariq Shabir, age 10, Wasim Isam Shabir, age nine, Rahab Khalil Shabir, age four, Yasim Al Hamid, age four, Mohammed Shaheed, age 15, Mohammed Salam, age 4. On Saturday, July the 19th, Mohammed Bassam, age 17, Wasim Rida, age 15, Ibrahim Jamal, age 30, Mohammed Saeed, age 6, Rawia Mahmoud, age 7, Mahmoud Anwar Abu Shabab, age 16, and Faris Juma. Now I know why you're saying aged just five months. Ahmed Ishmael, age 14, and Mohammed Ishmael, age 15. Walla Ishmael, age 13, and Samir Abu Jarad, age 1. Musa Abu Rahman, age 6 months. Ahmad Musa Jarad, age 13. Abdullah Jamal, age 17. Hamad Alawan, age 7. Kasim, age 4, Sarah Bastan, age 13, and Rasak Al Hayat, age 2. Amjad Salim, age 15. On Saturday, July the 19th, Mohammed Bassam age 17, and Wasim, yes. age Sahaya. No. On Sunday, blind. No. on Sunday, July the 20th, no. Anas Yusuf Mamar, age 16, and Abdullah Duraj, age 3, Mohammed Raja, age 15, Jamil Saida, age 12, Mohammed Al Halak, age 2. Hassan Akram Al Halak, age 6. Hanan Akram Al Halak, age 8. Hanan Hassan Akram Al Halak, age 8. Saida Hassan Akram Al Halak, age 4. Osama Khalil, age 9. Khalil Osama at Khalil, age 7. Imam Khalil, age 9. Ibrahim Khalil, age 13. Assam Khalil, age 4. Tala Akram, age 7. Adil Abdullah, age 2. Dina Abdullah, age 2. And Rahaf Ishmael, age 4. Saeed Hassan, age 15. Saeed Hassan, alias Saeed Hassan, age 11. Badia Saeed Hassan, age 10. Hala Hamid, Khalil, age 13. Omar Hamuda, age 10. Dada 
Hamuda, age 10. Gada, Ayid Hamuda, age 9. Mohammed Rafi Kayas, age 6. Mohammed Aysan Ayad, age 6. Mohammed Fatia Ayad, age 2. Maria Shakar Al Jamal, age 2. Sunday, Bawa Salman, age 13, Razwan Tawik, Abu Jam, age 14, Jadwa Tawik, Abu Jam, age 13, Ayat Tawik, Abu Jam, age 12, Hafia Tawik, Abu Jam, age 9, Ahmed Tawik, Abu Jam, age 8, Maisa Tawik, Abu Jam, age 7, Tawik, Abu Dawam, Abu Jam, age 4. Fatima Ahmad Abu Jam, age 12. Ayub Abu Jam, age 10. Ryan Abu Jam, age 5. Rinat Abu Jam, age 2. Mujid Abu Jam, age 4 months. Batul Bassam Abu Jam, age 4. Sahela Abu Jam, age 3. Bissan Abujam, age six months. Sajia Abujam, age seven. Siraj Abujam, age four. Noor Abujam, age two. That is 19 members of children from one family. Final child that day was Hussan Abu Kassim, age seven. <laughs> On Monday of this week, Wajid, age 1, Hussein Kainas, age 5, Ahmed Saeed, 17, Mustafa Saeed, 12, Gadia Saeed, 8, Dalal Saeed, age 8 months, Abdullah Hashir, age 16, Maya Al Yazaj, age 2, Anas Al Yazaj, age 5, Yasser Ibrahim, Dil Kabani, age 8. Elias Ibrahami Dil Kabani, age 4. Susan Ibrahami Al Kabani, age 11. Reem Ibrahami Al Kabani, age 12. Yasmin Ibrahami, age 9. On Tuesday, Mona, age 4. Ahmed Salah, age 17. Abedu, age 15. And Noor Islam, age 12. On Wednesday, Mohammed Mansour, age seven, Zainab, who is just labelled as a child, Rabia Kasim, age twelve, and today, finally, July the twenty-sixth, Hassan Abdul Ghanani, age fifteen, Mahmoud Al Rakhim, age eleven, Yunus Amar. Khalid, age 14, Yunus Rawan, age 17, Amira, age 1, Yunus Islam, age 4, Salah, age 9, Hadi Salah, age 12, Abdul Aziz, age 15, Salam Aziz, age 9, Yunus, age 5, Mohammed Ishmael, age 17, Mohammed, age 16, Nad Abram, age 5, Ahmed Abu, age 11 months, Ibrahim Kudani, age 8, and Mustafa, aged just 12 months. That length list, as we know, will not be exhausted today. As a mum, I cannot imagine the pain that mums in Gaza are going through. We've heard powerful speeches today, and we need now to stand up and all we can to. As a mother, I put my daughters to bed at night and I kiss them good night. I go downstairs, I put the kettle on, I make a cup of tea, watch Coronation Street. I never imagined that my children would not be safe in the bed. We are now going out to the two minute silence. It will be signified by the horn. And I can ask you all please to respect that and just give ourselves two minutes reflection of what a family is. Thank you.
Brothers and sisters, since the atrocities in Gaza and in Palestine, as a mother, as a sister, as a daughter, I have never in my life seen images of babies, of children. I have no idea what is going through the hearts of the mothers in Gaza. I have no idea. My own grandson was admitted into hospital just this week. He had an, he had an accident. I was mortified. But thank God we live in a country where we can dial three digits and the ambulance is at your doorstep and will take your child, your baby, straight to emergency. The people of Gaza don't have this. These mothers lie there with their children. Watching them die, and there's nothing they can do about it. Yes, there is. But we, as a collective, can create awareness and stop this massacre from happening in Gaza. Free, free. Soldier 
school floated a picture on his Instagram showing a child head in the point blank range, shooting range of his rifle. They are cold blooded murderers who have no regard for children serving in their army, and that disgusts me. I feel strongly as a mother. I put my children to bed every night, and Alhamdulillah, I can sleep knowing my children are safe. But what about my sisters in Gaza? They can't sleep because they don't know if their children will survive the night. Israel has to Gaza with bombs, one of the most densely populated areas in the world. It is a piece of land measuring 25 by 7 miles with a population of 1.8 million people living in this area. Over half of this population is aged 16 or under. Even animals are protected more than animal rights than a child in Gaza by human rights. Israel bombs civilian targets like homes, schools, hospitals, so dropping bombs in civilian areas is unlawful it's illegal. They are breaking international law. In fact, just days ago, they bombed the UN school, which was also a refugee camp. Oh, Israel, if you are going to fire at a refugee camp, then guess what? You are going to kill children. Just goes to show there is no place safe in Gaza. And on the subject of the UN, where is the UN? Where is the international community? When Iraq broke two international resolutions, it was invaded. Israel has broken 65 and counting, yet there is no response. What if this happened in London? You know there would be an immediate response. War crimes are being committed. This is genocide, and the world needs to wake up and put a stop to this now. If we don't, not only are we doing injustice for the, to the oppressed, but not speaking up for them, but we're also setting a bad example to our children, the next generation. They will think it's okay for children to be killed, but we all know there is simply no justification for it, none whatsoever. This is about giving Gaza a voice. Israel chooses guns and violence. Our weapon is the spoken word. Our weapon is being heard. A few facts for you about the situation in Gaza. 92% of children there suffer from post-traumatic stress, along with 75% mothers and 59% fathers. In 2000, 24,000 Palestinians crossed the border to work in Israel every day. Today, that figure is zero. 70% of families live on $3 or less a day. 36,000 cattle, sheep, goats were killed and over a billion chickens. 80% of families in Gaza require food and aid. Houses, hospitals and schools have been destroyed. But did you know concrete, metal, steel and gas, uh, sorry, and glass is not allowed in by Israel to prevent tens of thousands, tens of, thousands of homes, schools, hospitals and buildings to be repaired or rebuilt. 95% of industries are suspended due to sanctions on raw materials and the lack of export. As a result of fuel and electricity restrictions, the hospital faced 8 to 12 hours of power cuts per day, along with 90% of Gaza, and the rest, well, they have no electricity at all. 32,000 have no running water. 100,000 or so people drink water every two to three days. And 80% of this water does not meet the World Health Organization standard for drinking. Let's quickly talk about the facts of Operation Castellet, Israel's last invasion. 773 civilian victims killed. 320 of these casualties were children under 18. Of these 320 child casualties, 73% died of bombs, 19.8% died from artillery, uh, artillery shells. 5.4% were shot, 1.5% died from phosphorus gas. 
this history of child massacre has got to stop and it's got to stop right now. I know a lot of us are watching the news and feeling despair. I get messages from people daily saying they're heartbroken, they feel helpless. But did you know you can help by boycotting Israeli products? This can potentially end the siege of Gaza by putting economic pressure on Israel. It's not an easy task to do. In the last 100 years or so, 10 million of them are controlling billions of humans all around the world, including 1.5 billion Muslim consumers. They control everything we consume, from what we eat, what we wear, what we drive, what we watch, what we read, where we shop. And because we've been born into buying these brands, it's not going to be an easy task to do, but the main thing we need to do is realise this and the impact that this has. And if we unite together, we can make a difference collectively. I don't want people going on a tangent. In particular, I appeal to the Muslim community to back each other's efforts and work collectively. George Galloway has spoken before about the potential power of the Ummah, but it's such a shame that our differences have the tendency of dampening our efforts. We have a boycott test campaign taking place right now at Canal Road and Great Horton Road this afternoon. In a market like Bradford, the supermarkets will be competing for each traffic. There are so many brands and supermarkets to tackle and being honest with you, we simply cannot take everyone on at this point. Because, but saying that, we all have to start somewhere and I hope as a community you will join us in making this effort to make a difference. We can also make a difference by persevering with the press, the left, MPs and politicians to speak up and speak. Once we're on the subject, I'd like to commend MP David Ward for speaking up. He was one of very few MPs that have spoken up recently but was forced to apologise for his comments. I do find it rather ironic though because when our very own Prime Minister David Cameron said if Israel, if I was Israel, I would bomb Gaza, where was the outcry then? I'm with you on this one David Ward, if been I Palestinian. The UK and US government have recently announced millions of pounds of work in a humanitarian aid to Gaza, but I'm not fooled by this. Did you know they supply Israel military equipment worth billions? Mr Cameron, if you really want to make a difference, why don't you sanction the arms you supply to Israel? It would be a lot more effective and it would save lives. I also want to highlight that this is the month of giving for many Muslims. Our brothers and sisters need us right now in Palestine, but let's not also forget the plight of Syria. Over 1,700 people have died this week alone. I could talk a lot, but I feel so passionately about this. But finally, I'm going to round off by saying, you don't have to be a Muslim to stand up for Gaza. This isn't a matter of religion, it's a matter of humanity. All you have to do is look at us here at City Park to see our passion for justice. It comes in many shades. You have all come from different backgrounds, different creeds, and despite all of our differences, we all bleed one colour. We all believe, we all belong to one race, and that is the human race. We're showing the world that despite what you read about Bradford, we can come together. Unity is a beautiful bond, and it's what makes Bradford so special. A tribute to Bradford Council and all the businesses here, council leaders and the people that were, that were involved in raising the Palestinian flag today, people. I can't tell you how proud I am of Bradford right now. Respect to you all. Peace out. Brothers and sisters, I have some absolutely fantastic news to share with you today. Literally 30 minutes ago, I got a phone call. I got a phone call from a very dear friend that wanted to let the people know of Bradford that they will no longer 
be supplying Coca-Cola in their restaurants and in their supermarkets. I would like to bring to the stage Shabir from Atbas, Tariq Haq from Pakiza, Rashid from Zoya. Please give them a massive round of applause. These are the people that are going to lead the revolution. The revolution against boycotting Coca-Cola and it's really produced in Bradford! products. 
Jews are different types of people. The Jews ain't bad, but the Zionists are evil. Even the rabbis know the Zionists are crazy. You take life for granted, but they're killing newborn babies. Freedom won't be achieved until they feel the same pain. Palestinian shower tears pouring down like rain. And we word is a fact, not one was an opinion. When I say free Palestine, I'm talking for billions. Free Palestine and lay down your weapons. This is for the innocent souls that went to heaven. Because what happened in America on 9 11 happens in Palestine 24 7 to your free, 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 Israel is funded by many, including Obama. Then they say that the bigger threats came from Osama. That's not true. Most of that stuff is lies. They don't show how hundreds die overnight. Can you imagine if that was one of us? Houses, families all blown down to dust. Many being kidnapped and girls being raped. Many have been injured, but none receive any aid is taken a life. Really worth it for just some land. Those who drink from Starbucks surely don't understand. More Israeli goods being sold means more weapons. More bullets that kill Palestinians every second Freedom won't be achieved until they feel the same pain Palestinian shower tears pouring down like rain Every word is a fact, not one was an opinion When I say free Palestine, I'm talking for billions Free Palestine and lay down your weapons This is for the innocent souls that went to heaven Cause what happened in America on 9-11 Happens in Palestine 24-7 
but you guys in Bradford have an MP like uh, David Ward and particularly like George Galloway uh, who's trying to fight for Palestine, not today, not just for the headlines, but for days and years and decades. So brothers and sisters, remember when you vote in that election, if the Labour Party the, have a leader that says he's proud to be a Zionist, we have the Liberal Democrats, of which I'm a member, it's shameful that we have a Liberal Democrat leader who says he stands with Israel. And then we have David Cameron, the Prime Minister, who says he's proud to be a Zionist and he stands with Israel. I say at the next election, don't vote for any of the three mainstream parties. Vote for a candidate who will fight for Palestine. And I want one more thing about the boycott campaign. I think it's shameful that a Muslim supplier here in Bradford and also in my hometown of Rochdale was selling dates from illegally occupied West Bank. And when, and as much as it's great that you boycott Coca-Cola and Starbucks and all these, don't forget, we're never going to win if our own people within our own communities are selling uh, dates from occupied territory. So brothers and sisters, please make the effort to go to your local shop and talk to your local shop and make sure they don't sell dates from occupied Palestine. I want to do one more thing, brothers. I want to take a photograph of you all. I want to put two fingers up and then when I get to Gaza, I'm going to show the people of Bradford stand with the people of Gaza. Just act <laughs> Hopeless. 
right to self-defense except for Palestine. Well, no more. Egypt, they're 
countries and what we need and what we are lacking is a leader for the Muslims. That's what we're lacking. We, uh, we need a unified Islamic army to fight for us. Now if you think the UN is going to do something for you, forget it. The UN is run by Zionists. The UN, the, uh, the U, uh, Secretary General Ban Ki Moon recently visited Israel. He recently visited Mr. Mahmoud Abbas in Qatar, but he did not have the decency and courage to ask for a ceasefire in Gaza, so he can then go and see the destruction himself. So he can then go and visit those kids whose brains have been blown apart, whose backs have been broken in hospitals. He did not have the courage to do that. And this is the UN. They say we're a humanitarian organization. Well, where is the humanity there? And let me tell you about the Jews. Zionism has no place in Judaism. As far as Judaism is concerned, they state that Israel cannot have a state of their own. The Torah itself states that the Jews must live amongst the other peoples. And when they go and, go and bomb people of Gaza and there are um, Jews who protest, the rabbis who protest in Israel saying we cannot have a Jew, we cannot have a Zionist state and uh, you should all know that Zionism was created by an atheist 100 years ago and Judaism is centuries old and when they when they protest in Gaza just like they are oppressing the Muslims in Palestine the Zionists are oppressing the Jews in Israel in fact in New York there are some parts of New York where the Jews, where the Jews are banned by the Zionists from having any protest. And talk about David Cameron. He says, look, Israel have, has our staunch, staunch support. Now, is Israel a rogue straight? Is Israel a terrorist state? Is Israel a terrorist state? Well, if Israel is a terrorist state and then David Cameron says Israel has our staunch support, that means David Cameron supports terrorists. Is that true? Yes. Cameron supports terrorists. Cameron supports terrorists. Lastly, I talk about 9-11 and it's very brief. As far as 9-11 is concerned, I pray dear brothers and sisters, had it not been, had it not been for the pro-Zionist powerful lobbying in America on the American administration and the instant influencing by the Zionists on, on the American administration on the Israeli conflict, on the Palestine conflict, 9-11 probably would not have happened. That's the root cause. The root cause of 9-11 is the Palestine-Israel issue. And don't let these demonstrations, these marches, deter you from saying, well, I don't think the marches are going to get us anywhere. It's to raising public awareness. And this time round is different. It's raising public awareness so they can see what we are doing. And you, I was at the London March last weekend where 100,000 people attended. And it closed off half of West End. Knightsbridge was closed. Businesses broke road to an end, to, to a stop. So that's what it does. And somehow, somewhere, it's going to come to a stop. And that's when the British public, and really, when, uh, when uh, the, uh, and Mohammed Shafiq was talking about the uh, Labour Party, the mainstream political parties, I said to you, I said to you, next time, they come and knock on your doors, and they said to you, look, we want your vote. You say to them, go back to your leaders and ask your leaders to announce that one, we will stop any, we will ban imports of any Israeli goods to the UK, we will impose sanctions on Israel and we will ban the supply of arms to Israel and then see what they say. This is what we need to say then because we, the mistake we make because we are a weak Ummah, you have to accept that we are weak and inshallah, inshallah we are getting stronger. And because what we see here, this is a blessing from Allah that we are here. And we will get stronger and stronger. 
But one thing we do, the mistake we keep making day in and day out, we keep still going to vote Shut for them. Because last time what happened, we voted for that Satan, Tony Blair. And when it came to the election again, we voted, voted for him again. That's where we need to be strong as an Ummah. And lastly, one comfort we draw, one comfort we all draw from this, my dear brothers and sisters, is that we all know and Allah has promised us that we will be victorious. That's a promise and that's what... Guys, did you learn anything today? What did you learn? Boycott. Inshallah. 
Next week, there's also another protest in Blackburn. I invite all you beautiful people to be there. It's on Saturday. Uh, stay, have a look at Drive for Justice, Facebook and Twitter, inshallah. And um, hopefully we'll meet again before I go. Free, free! 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 What do we want? Brothers and sisters, as we advertised this protest, we said it was going to be a multi-faith, peaceful protest. Let me emphasize this again, multi-faith, peaceful protest. I now have Alan, who is a Christian minister, that would like to say a few words about the atrocities happening in Gaza. Alan. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here uh, to stand with you. I am a, a father of four daughters. Uh, I'm a Christian minister not too far from here. Uh, and I'm appalled about the things I see on the television, and so I want to stand here as a fellow human being. Of course, the world is a very complex place, uh, and for us, it's complex because the things we see on TV hurt and upset us. But for many people in the world, it's a frightening and a painful place. And certainly for those in Gaza, it is a frightening and painful place. Now, of course, where you start the story really matters when it comes to telling tales of this sort. Some, some in my own tradition, start the story with sacred texts that speak of the land belonging to a particular people. Some start the story speaking of national borders, some speak of race, and some speak of politics. But it is my call that we start the story, as you've already heard, by declaring our common humanity. We are all people on this same planet and we need to learn how to live in peace. Where we start the story is really important. Secondly, we need to recognize that there is more than one story taking place in this world and in this conflict. And the names of all of those children that have been killed, every one of them represents stories of families, and other, uh, and other parts of the community that have been deeply hurt. The writer, Nigerian writer Chimamanda Adichie speaks about the danger of the single story. And unfortunately, our media speak in single stories. They paint a whole people group as one particular thing, when we know it's far more complex than that. I was speaking to an Irish friend of mine about the troubles they had some years ago in their own country. And he said to me that peace came about when people started to share their stories with each other. And peace comes about when we tell the true story. Unfortunately, as we know, the media is not telling the whole story. Well, I want to tell you that the story doesn't belong to the media. In these days of social media, the story is ours, and we can tell the truth. Of course, as well as that, stories have a hierarchy. And as a Christian minister, I want to declare that I am against violence of all sorts, because it adds a fuel to the fire. Having said that, the biggest responsibility in all of these stories lays with those with the most power. The most power are those, are, are those are the people who we need to challenge because they have the responsibility to create the environment for peace. And where you start, the story matters. And so we need to challenge our religious leaders to speak for peace. We need to challenge our political leaders to speak for peace. We need to challenge our nations to speak for peace. And let me encourage you finally with this. Tell the story of our common humanity. Let's not tell stories about tribes that divide us. But let's get people on side by reminding people that we belong together in peace. Tell the stories... Tell the stories on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. There are so many voiceless people in Palestine and in Gaza, and 
we can stand up as you've been doing today to tell the stories and tell these stories to those who are in power and make your votes count and make your purchasing power count one. and to Say be one. for Say peace one. is a positive thing and so thank you for listening. <laughs> I'm going to get um, Wakit to Wasik to introduce the next speaker. Our millions to our trillion. We are all Palestinians. Free, 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 brothers and sisters. I'm sure everyone here has an iPhone. Hands up if you've got an iPhone. Come on, there's more people than that with iPhones. Please download an app called Bicot. It's absolutely fantastic. Wherever you go, wherever you shop, Use the app Bicot. It's also available for Android phones. Scan your products. Make sure they are not from Israel. Make sure that you do not help Israel with the war against the children. I want you all to download this app called Bicot. Please do that today. I now have an MC. I'm not an MC, I'm a poet. Um, he's called Bilal Major Shah with Israel, I do believe. Can we all have a round of applause for Bilal Major Shah? <laughs> What's happening, Big Wass? Yes, Bradford's legend. Um, right, okay. Um, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? All right. Look, um, see, Cameron, Cameron says that they stand in support with, with the Palestinians, uh, with the Israelis, sorry. But if Cameron supporting the Israelis, what doesn't make sense is, is he's leading a country, but he's not representing the people which he leads, which means he's representing people that he doesn't lead, which is people in the Middle East who are sort of killing everybody off, right? Which is sort of screwed up, so I guess Cameron's taking something in his pocket that he shouldn't be, right? Or he's scared of somebody. He should be scared of us, man. He's not going to be scared of... Yeah! Too chill now. Should you be scared of you? I just, I just um, got scared there myself. Listen, um, my name is Major, yeah? Um, my brother's name here is Israel. Please, please, no. This is theatre I can project. Please do not approach my brother at the end of this performance talking about who's killing kids now, Israel? And who's the big bad wolf now, right? He's just a brother. Israel was the name uh, yeah, the Jews no, gave Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam. So please, I've had four trips to the hospital with this guy already. Uh, not doing another one would be very nice. Fantastic, your son. Um, two tracks we're going to perform. Uh, do you want to get started with the first one, please, sir? Do you want to say hello first, even? Hello. We. Oui. He's on next, he's on next. Chill, relax. Why is it taking so long? So anyway, uh, while we're waiting, just to prevent an awkward silence, this t-shirt was made out fresh and funky. Uh, cost me £15. If you would like to copyright the design, please do let me know. Uh, going to Google, type in the name, you'll find it. Uh, not mine. Are we rolling? This is what happens when it's organized by Asians. <laughs> turn the mic down a little bit, Rashid. Turn the instrumental up a little bit. Uh, 
Let's go one mic. Let's go one mic. Hey! 
down and that was just uh, a bit hard. Sorry brothers, you normally do stuff that really is not necessary because we can imagine the sounds of bombs and guns because we've been watching it on our Twitter feed. We've been watching it on Facebook for the last 19 days. But what you won't see, what Israel is really scared of us seeing, is the resistance is the bravery of the people of Palestine under the bombs. Because brothers and sisters, the resistance I hear from people on the ground have been breaking their fasts with leaves for days. Leaves, brothers and sisters. And when their colleagues went to take them some food recently, they said, by Allah, we are all right. Take the food to the poor. So what the media really doesn't want you to see is the bravery of the Palestinians who are like the Sahaba in their patience. May Allah bless them all. Amen. They are our lesson this Ramadan and for the last more than six decades. The Palestinians now are teaching us Sabbath and sugar and strength and steadfastness oh, and will we learn the lesson with them yes. are we with the people of palestine yes. brothers and sisters there was an aid worker a couple of days ago and he had money enough to buy 200 food packs for some of the 200,000 people displaced now in gaza 200 food packs and he went to a supermarket that had managed to open he said I'll be back in two hours and do you know what happened when he got back the supermarket had delivered 400 food packs and he said to the owner of the supermarket I don't have this much money to give he said by Allah do you think you will be more generous to our people than me never whatever you give I will double. So they took the food packs into cars, into taxis, and when they arrived at the schools where the families are now having to live, by Allah, the first school, hundreds of families said, we will not accept this sadhaka. He said, why? You are hungry, you're th 92 bodies. A friend in Manchester, now in his late 80s, was there, across the road from the hotel, and his friend who was with him, also a soldier, was killed. Now Palestinians are labelled as terrorists, but the State of Israel owes its existence to terrorism. They were the terrorists first. I have been going back to Palestine regularly and since 1992, but I've not been able to get back to Gaza because it's virtually impossible to get into Gaza. But every time I go, since the first intifada has been worse and worse and worse. Over and again, I think it can't get any worse, and then it does. I have seen the ugly wall grow up spread and divide communities. I have seen demolished homes, demolished houses everywhere, and I've actually watched one only a few years ago actually being demolished. Where did the law come from that allows those collective homes to be demolished? From Britain. The law of collective punishment was imposed by Britain, and the Israelis say, well, we're just doing what the British did. I've seen increasing numbers of illegal settlements in the West Bank. I have seen Palestinian olive groves destroyed. I've seen water diverted, roads built, which are reserved for Israeli registered vehicles only. The number plates on the cars are different colors. Yellow for Israel, green for Palestinians. And the Israeli ones go everywhere, but the Palestinians are limited to particular roads. I've seen communities divided by the law, by the war, and have many friends suffering in the West Bank 
but working endlessly and tirelessly for Jerusalem, for of justice and peace. The people that I go to visit are a group called Sabil. Their name is on this bag in front of me. They work together, a group of Palestinian Christians. Sabil is an Arabic word meaning a way, a channel, a spring. Together they got together, like the South Africans, in 1985 and produced this document, a Kairos document. The South Africans did this and it was the beginning of the end of the apartheid regime. Kairos is a Greek word meaning crisis and opportunities. With Sabil, Christians and Muslims and Jews work together in various ways for peace for Palestinians. I hope and pray that just as things began to work out in South Africa in the 90s, 1990s, Palestinians will soon be free to be the people God intended them and us all to be. It's often hard to hope, but it's better to light a candle than forever to curse the darkness. Uh, but the ones that of you who are still here, thank you very much. Um, it's been a wonderful day. It's been nice weather, so you all got a bit of a tan as well. But, um, it's, it's been uh, eventful. Uh, please remember the, the messages that have been portrayed. There's no point going home and, like they said earlier on, you know, having a sip of coke at study time or anything like that. Boycott it all. Do your bit. It'll make you feel better, and above all, it'll make a difference. Um, we've got a few people left. Here. No. We have a, a gentleman here, I believe he's all the way from Manchester. He has something that he would like to say to you all. And then after this gentleman, we have MC Chippy. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say this one more time. We have MC Chippy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings and the mercy of God be upon everybody who turned up here, non Muslims and Muslims alike. The fact that we're here is testimony that before we say we are Muslims, before we say we are Christians, before we say we are Jewish, we are human beings. And we have hearts. And our hearts feel pain when we see children being murdered. Our hearts feel pain when we see women being murdered. Our hearts feel pain when we see men being murdered. And we have to ask ourselves, why are they being murdered? We all know about the Operation Cast Lead in 2008, when 1,400 people, most of them women and children, were murdered. And the latest bombardment of Gaza after three Israelis were killed. Now over almost 700 Gazans have been killed, most of them women and children. It was brought to my attention the other day that there's a bit more that meets the eye to this situation in Gaza. From the Guardian newspaper, they reported, and I'm not sure if many of you are aware of this, but I will read from the text. And this is an article from the Guardian newspaper. Now, take this into consideration. While many articles have debunked the myth that Israel is acting out of self-defense, very few articles have attempted to establish why Israel continuing its assault on Palestine through Operation Protective Edge. Aside from the supposition that Zionists have a fanatic purchase for drawing Palestinian blood, behind the operation behind the mass Israeli and US propaganda attempting to justify the massacre and behind the death of every child in Gaza is a conflicting, rarely discussed and imperious conflict and a contradiction that rests on Israel's ambition to appropriate and profit from Gaza's natural gas resources. Gaza's natural gas resources. I know lots of you, or many of you, or most of you, are not aware of this. Now this is a fact. To provide some background, the natural gas
Genesis were alive in the year 2000 when British Gas discovered what claimed to be 4 billion pounds worth of natural gas reserves off the coast of Gaza. The Palestinian Investment Fund, the PIF, and British Gas both invested in the project. The BG, British Gas, holding 60% of the rights. Since then, more gas has been found in the region of Gaza. Michael Trosagoski, a, can a Canadian columnist, has estimated that the amount of gas in Palestine is so grand that what they, it would make the Palestinians just as rich as great. There's so much gas in the region of Gaza that if they were to capitalize on it, they would be as rich as the region of Kuwait, who we all know is an oil-rich state. In two reaction, since 2000, Israel has strengthened its maritime blockade on Gaza and made sure the waters have been stifled and controlled by the Israeli, the Israeli Navy, keeping the people away from this gas reserve. A lot of you ain't aware of this, now be aware. And have a look at this, it's on the uh, website, of another website also, which is called... Sorry, give me a second, I'm just going through a few pages here. But this thing is mainly about this gas reserve. Now, Israel has strengthened its maritime blockade of Gaza, denying Palestine basic rights over its territorial waters and driving away the Palestinian fishing boats and contaminating the waters so heavily from its naval attacks that the fishing industry is absolutely collapsed now for the Gaza people. On its coastal littoral, reported by Beaumont from Gaza several years ago, Gaza's limitations are marked by a different fence where bars by this map where the bars are Israeli gunboats with their huge weights scurrying beyond the Palestinian fishing boats and preventing them from going outside Gaza and so are imposed by the warships. It is discernible that this is directly due to Israel's appetite for Palestinian gas. In recent years, Israel's energy crisis has deepened as marked by the letter by two Israeli scientists we believe Israel should increase its domestic use of natural gas by 2020 and not exporting gas. The letter reads, the Natural Gas Authority estimates are lacking. There's a gap of 100 to 150 billion cubic meters between the demand projections that were presented to the committee and the most recent projections. The gas reserves are likely to last around 40 years as the need for energy has grown in Israel so have their ruthless attempts to seek it by killing Palestinian women and children and men. After the election of Hamas in 2006, Israel began negotiating with British, with British gas since, according to the former chief of staff of the